Hello, I'm Atuba George and I'm so blessed to be bringing you God's truth today. Praise God. Can we make demand for our daily bread? Are you ready? Say, Father, I demand right now my daily bread. It's coming to me in Jesus' name. Amen. Praise God. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Now, you know, yesterday I was sharing what I shared in response to the trending video. And the interpretation people are giving it. Because see, if we don't teach what is right, people will misunderstand even that which is true. And if we keep quiet and say that's their business, remember God said to Ezekiel, he said, when I see a sword coming, I will tell you. And your job is to warn the people for me. So if you see the sword coming and you don't want them, the sword will come and destroy them. But your blood, their blood, I will demand from your hands. So you can't see righteousness and keep quiet. When you know, you can't see unrighteousness and when you know righteousness and keep quiet. Unrighteousness will swallow people up. But guess what? Because you knew righteousness, God will demand their blood from your hands. So sometimes when we speak the truth as God has revealed to us, now you cannot know truth by your knowledge. You cannot know truth by your study. You know truth because it is revealed to you. Jesus is the revealer of truth. And he's the one building his church. So listen, we're in the days, no wonder the Spirit of God told us this is the month of prayer. When the days you must be sensitive to the spirit of God and not in Ephesians says that we no more be children tossed to and fro by every wind of doctrine. Today, this person you respect say, hey, you say, yes, yes, yes. Tomorrow, this other person you respect say, oh, Z, you go, hmm, ah, yes, yes, I think I, no, 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 no. It, it shows we're still children. It shows we're not maturing. We are maturing when even those you respect, you see them crossing the line. You can hold them if you're close to them. You can hold them and say, hey, sir, I don't think this is the right part. Your speaking alone will save them. If they refuse to be saved, you have been made free from their blood. I know what I was sharing yesterday. I, actually, when when I heard that the boy said years ago, that if you don't tie, you go to hell. My, my, I actually went and began to pray for him. I said, Lord, let's not take this thing too far. Let's not overstretch this thing. It was in the place of prayer that the Lord began to reveal this truth to me that I shared with you yesterday. It was in a place of sincere praying for for a father of faith. That the Lord taught me. So now imagine how it felt now seeing him come in and say, Oh, that thing I said, I apologize for it. And listen carefully, he didn't say it's wrong, he just said, I apologize for it. May we in our day learn to follow that which is true. May our hearts be open to the Spirit of God to guide us. The day we live in is a season to pray. I'm telling you, it's a season to pray. And the kind of prayer we're praying is praying to become. Praying to become, not praying to have. Praying to become. If, if, if certain manifestations of the Spirit of God is not taking place in your life, you risk being caught up. If you don't see manifestation of truth in you, if you don't see yourself being brought by the Holy Ghost into the place of knowledge and understanding, you risk being cut off from his inheritance. Because Jesus clearly said it, my sheep hear my voice and they follow me. They don't follow another man. They follow me and a stranger's voice, they will not follow. Every one of us must follow Jesus. Now, as we hear one another speak, okay, I listen to a lot of preachers. 
And when I hear them, I judge what they say by the Spirit of God. Listen, no man is above mistakes. We all can share from the place of knowledge that we have. And, and, and truth is the Holy Ghost can take one and, and that's why the whole body blesses itself. And, and, and the truth is nobody is greater in this body. Nobody's, we don't judge greatness by the things men use to judge greatness. No, we don't. Someone can have the largest church building in the world, yet he's not the greatest before God. Someone can have the largest congregation, he's commanding millions of people around the globe, yet he's not the greatest before God. I'm telling you the truth. We measure greatness by your personal knowledge and fellowship with the Lord. For example, if you want to judge, if you want to judge based on what the Bible, the information the Bible has given to us, if you want to judge, you would simply want to think that Apostle Paul was greater than John, uh, the disciple of Jesus Christ. You see. Because you want to say, ah, Apostle Paul, in a part, major part of the New Testament, he wrote it. John just wrote, you know, three letters and, and one book. Uh, okay, Revelation. And, and we don't have stories in the Bible of the works of John. So you want to look at it and say, ah, just like John was not even preaching. It's like he was just, you know, enjoying his life. But the depth of revelation John carried that concerns the Lord Jesus Christ himself puts him on another level. So we may not know the works he's done, but it doesn't mean he did not do great works and then it doesn't mean he's small before the Lord. Those who are mighty before the Lord are those that truly know him. Jesus clarified that on that day, many who do greater works, many who do great works, great works, will stand before him and he will say to them, I never knew you. How were they doing those mighty works in his name? He says, I will say to them, I never knew you. So don't be misled. Don't say, oh, because this person said it. We're all learning. We're all growing. As we learn from the great people we think are great, we also learn from those that, are, that seem to be nothing. But what do you look out for? You look out for the character of Jesus in their lives. Look out for the character of Jesus in their statements. Don't look for the proud. Don't look for the noisemakers. Don't look for the ones who shout the loudest. Look for the ones that you can trail. You can see the character of Jesus in their lives. When they speak, listen to them. Even if you don't understand what they say, it's an opportunity to go before the Lord. That's what I keep telling people. Find every reason to go before the Lord. If a preacher says something I don't know, I do that a lot. And sometimes God gives me depths of knowledge that I don't even know if the preachers that that, that statement was packed off from. They may know, maybe not share it. I don't know. But, but I've seen that happen several times. A preacher will make a statement. I'll say, Lord, really? I'll go before the Lord. That, that's what I spend my time doing. I don't spend my time chasing money and looking for who will give me or what, what. I don't. I don't. I don't have time for such. Jesus said, seek ye first the kingdom and his righteousness. And guess what? All these things shall be added unto you. Are they being added to me? Yes, they are added to me. So when, so when I hear someone say something, I hear, dear Lord, I go before the Lord. I say, Lord, what's the meaning of this? This man follows you. What's the meaning? And there are times the Lord will tell me, straight on. I didn't tell him that. Now when he said, I didn't tell him that, I said, okay, sir. It's not for me to come out and say, that preacher, what he said, God didn't tell him that. No. And there are times I will hear, I will go before the Lord. I say, Lord, what is the meaning of this? And then the Lord will say, you don't even know half of the truth concerning it. Say, really? But what's the truth? 
then he and sometimes this thing takes several months he gives a line upon line so it's not just a statement he made that you're running with no he gives you line this thing takes months For weeks, the Lord will be talking to you. You know, and when I say for weeks, it's not because you're slow of understanding. It's because he will tell you something today. You will ne never hear him because even if you pray and pray and pray and pray, you will not hear him talk about it again until three weeks time. Three weeks time, he'll just come and give you another line. Now, what I know from the Spirit of God, I pray this helps you. Not because he's quiet, for all that time, he's not talking to you about it. Not because he's quiet. He is actually guiding you because you need layers of understanding to understand the next thing he's going to say to you. I read, I read a book many years ago titled the Foots of, the, In the Footsteps of the Prophet by, by Jerry Savelle. He's gone to be with the Lord now. And in that book, he, he said, now he's been he's been following Kenneth Copeland and listening to Kenneth Copeland, and so Kenneth Copeland was teaching him faith, and and he was trying to practice everything that Kenneth Copeland is teaching. They, they look practical, see. So he resigned from his business that he was doing. He said, "Look, man, because because the business was not really bringing in money, he was in debt." He said, "Look, I'm shutting down this business. I'm gonna live by faith." Like this preacher's teaching. <laughs> Praise God. And, and so he, all he does every day is to study and pray, study and pray, study and pray. And one day, he had an opportunity. Kenneth Copeland had come to fix his car in his garage because he used to fix cars. So because of Kenneth Copeland, you know, oh, you, oh yeah, Kenneth Copeland had a problem with his car when he was coming to their, their community. And, and so Kenneth Copeland said, oh yeah, I can fix it. So while he was fixing, he felt this is a great opportunity to meet and talk to this man one on one. And so he, he began to talk to Kenny Copeland and he said, Sir, I've been following your teachings on faith and trusting God for supplies and prosperity and all that. And Kenny Copeland said, Yeah, that's cool. You know, then he went, you know, I've seen God visit me in my health, in the area of my health. I mean, I don't fall sick like I used to before because of these teachings, you know, yeah. And then I said, but sir, I have a challenge. How do I talk God into practically supplying my needs? That was his question. And in response, Kenneth Copeland walked away. Kenneth Copeland just said something to him and walked away. What did Kenneth Copeland say? The shadow of a dog has never beaten any man. And he left. He just walked in. And you know, you don't follow such, I mean, <laughs> you know, he, he had this reverence for him. Kenneth Copeland was a great preacher. And here he was just fixing his car. I said, did this man understand what I'm saying? I'm talking about how God will supply my needs. He's telling me about dog and shadow. It troubled him. And they were supposed to have a meeting that evening. Because Kenneth Copeland came to town for a meeting. So he, he fixed the car, Kenneth Copeland left, and he, he spent the whole time bothered and wondering what is the meaning of shadow of a dog not beating any man. Then he began to ask them, say, Lord, what's the meaning of this? And the Lord opened his understanding. That shadow don't bite. Yeah, all these needs, all these financial challenges that I see, they're not real. They're about shadows. They won't bite me. Oh, I see what he said, praise God. I see what he, the, 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 the preacher, Kenneth Copeland, only made a statement. And he took this man the whole day trying to understand what that statement is. And the Lord began to put it line upon line to him line, until he figured it out. Said, yes, I get it. I get it. Now, so that evening, he went for the meeting. And while sitting down, Kenneth Copeland beckoned on him. Like, oh, he's calling me. Yeah. He said, you, you come. So he went. And then Kenneth Copeland said, were you able to figure out what I told you earlier? He said, yes, sir. I was able to figure it out. He said, okay. Then Kenneth Copeland gave him another, another one. He said, 
um, he said, I think he said, learn the vocabulary of silence or something, something like that. And he said, what is this one? No, no, no. I think the second one he said was that your problem is your big mouth. Now, now, this man was sitting. He only asked Kenny Copeland some questions in the morning, okay? And Kenny Copeland told him, shadow of the dog, I'm not beating any man. And it took him the whole day to figure this thing out. Now, he sees Kenny Copeland that evening in a meeting. And he goes to him. Kenny Copeland beckons him. Not that he went to Kenny Copeland and said, sir, I, I think I understand. What. No, Kenny Copeland beckoned on him. And he went and said, did you understand what I just said? He said, yes, sir, I do. I understand. Good. Then Kenny Copeland said to him, your problem is your big mouth. He said, you can go. He said that whole meeting, he had not one thing Kenneth Copeland shared. <laughs> Praise God. Because he was like, what's wrong with this man? What, what kind of thing is this? He actually was getting into offense. And the, the, the funny thing then was that, according to him in the book, him and his wife, they've been practicing guarding your mouth. They've been practicing what comes out of your mouth. They've literally told themselves, if you hear me make any negative statement, negative confession, just tell me immediately, I'll repent and correct myself. So they've been practicing this for weeks or months. And here is Kenneth Copeland coming and telling him that your problem is your big mouth. He said, what nonsense is this? Are you sure? You know, you get to that point. Are you sure this faith in Israel? You know, this man is just, you know, like you say to the whining me. Maybe there's something else that they don't want to tell me. There. He's just doing me like this. What kind? He actually got so upset that night. And 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 the next day, he, went, he, he really got angry. He went and carried the real, you know, those real tapes. Real tapes. Now, those tapes that are so big, you know, those sets that you hang it here hang it here and then you press play and then they begin you know what i'm talking about so that's that's the kind of tapes they had there he said he cut because he had bought some so he carried it and was rolling it down the road like this man i don't think i i'll listen to him again i don't think i don't he he was rolling the thing down the road. and then the word of the lord came to him he says there goes your solution you're throwing your solutions to you. He said, Lord, please, I don't want to hear. Say, you're throwing your solutions away. So he went and picked it up. I said, but Lord, this is not fair. This man doesn't know how much I have put into taming my mouth. And the Lord began to speak to him. He says, look, see, I love the Lord. A lot of people don't really honor the Lord in their lives. If you do, you will see things differently. And the Lord had to explain to him how truly his problem was his big mouth. The Lord told him that I will give you supernatural recollection and I will bring to your mind everything you have been saying in the past few days. And the Lord did. Ah, he went and began to apologize to the Lord. And apologize. So the next meeting, he got there and Kenneth Copeland saw him again, beckoned on him again. So, dear Lord, what's he going to say this time? <laughs> and he got to Kenneth Copeland and Kenneth Copeland said to him, Learn the vocabulary of silence. And those three things were the things Kenneth Copeland said to him that really changed his life. But you see, Kenneth Copeland did not explain them to him. They were statements that he made, but it took the Holy Spirit to explain them to him for it to be truly beneficiary to him. What am I sharing with you? The reason we pray and pray indeed is that the Lord, number one, will make his word clear in our hearts. If that is not happening in your life, it's not about what pastor preached on Sunday. It's not about what you hear your pastor declare. No, those things, they are so little in the, in, in, in the things that will make you great. What will truly make you great is that thing you heard the pastor say, take it back to the Holy Spirit. And so Holy Spirit, can you explain this one to me? He is the one Jesus left to be our teacher. Is he teaching you? If he's not teaching you, then you're not praying. Oh, Pastor, I've been praying. I don't know why God is not answering me. Ah, huh? you're not praying. If you're praying, he would answer you. Now, answering you is not by the manifestations that you see. The first place he answers is by giving you understanding. 
it teaches you. It is his teaching that brings understanding to you. This is why we pray. We pray that we may know. We pray that we may understand. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Praise God. Our time is up. Listen, pray, pray, pray. What are you looking for? Don't look for power. Look for understanding. He told us in Proverbs, in all you're getting, get understanding. That's what I'm calling you for today. Get understanding. Can you begin to pray and say, Lord, give me understanding about life. Give me un anything you don't understand in scriptures. Even this tightening whole thing that people are arguing over. Why don't you go to the Lord and say, Lord, give me understanding concerning tithing. He will guide you to it. Thank you, Jesus. Praise God. I pray for you. Now the Spirit of the Lord will take you and begin to fill you with his truth. Let the Lord build your life into the edifice that he has planned and ordained for you. In the mighty name of the Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. Praise God. I'll see you tomorrow. God bless you. Bye.